Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today's video is sponsored by the team at Fickle Dice Games who asked me very nicely if I would have a go at one of the weapons teams from Gloom Trench. So this is the British Empire laser cannon and I had a blast. I've done something that I normally don't which is to turn my base into a little diorama. I'm going to talk about the basing and how I've achieved that look with the logs a little bit towards the end of the video but you can skip forward. There are timestamps down the bottom if you want to get to the good stuff straight away. Now a lot of the advice you're going to see in today's video is repeated from the original Gloom Trench Rifleman video so I'll include that down in the description too so you can have a look. I'll make sure as well that all of the STLs and the site for Fickle Dice are in the description too so you can check these out. All of the paints will be listed down there as well. Let's get started. Now first off, a quick note on assembling these guys. You may have heard fairly recently that the Astra Militarum heavy weapons teams have gone down to 50mm size bases, which gives them a little bit less real estate on the base to work with. And I had to think about whether or not I wanted to try and cram all three guys onto a 50mm base. It's not something really important for Gloom Trench, but if you do want to use these with an Imperial Guard army, well, you follow the basing protocol there. So it's going to be easy enough to get the loader and the gunner on a 50 mil base. Easy as that. But it does start getting a little bit peculiar trying to cram this third guy on. Now on a 60 millimeter base, this would be nothing. But all three of them together on a 50 mil base, it's a little busy. So what I'm going to do instead is something kind of cribbed from bolt action, where I'm going to have this third fella off to the side on the floor, on a third base, and instead put something here to liven up the base a little bit and make it a bit more interesting without being quite so crowded. Now this would be a good spot for sandbags or something, but I'm going to show you something else. Right now we're not too worried about the base, we're going to come back to that later. What I've done is to hit these guys with a primer of Zandri dust. You can also use English uniform from Vallejo if you can get your hands on that. Uh, but one way or the other, once the primer has dried, what I've got here is English uniform from Vallejo from the pot. And I'm going to go fairly messily over all of the uniform. Don't worry about anything else that you hit, uh, particularly up around the helmet. You know, just get in behind things there. And any gaps in the uniform or the cloak where you can see their arms or their back showing through, just jam a little English uniform in there too. Once that's dried, it's time to turn to their webbing and equipment, and for this I'm using Morgast Bone from Citadel. You could also use Iraqi Sand here, it's a very similar colour. And while I appreciate we are painting essentially fictional troops, this is pretty much as close to accurate for period webbing as you could get, so I'm more comfortable sticking close to the history. After all, the Walloping Great Laser Cannon sort of says everything we need to about whether or not this is real. <laughs> Now after a couple of coats of that, we're going to paint in some of the metallic details. Now these fellas are wearing male shirts under their uniforms, so I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel for these and any of the other metallic details I want to paint now. This is quite a bright base coat, really, but I want something bright so that once I shade these guys, I don't have to do an awful lot of extra work. You'll see here on the laser cannon, I haven't done very much silver at all, and it's because I'm thinking about how the Vickers machine guns looked. All of these big brass uh, fittings and the tripod and what have you were all painted green. And while I don't necessarily need for this to be historically accurate, what I want is for it to be historically plausible. I want it to look as though it's going to fit into our real world. So, not very much silver. What I have here is Karak stone, and I'm going to move on to painting in the leg wraps. Now, this will be a little bit acrobatic in some areas. But for the most part, you should be able to just jam your brush in there and get enough. That's not going to matter. Now, as well as the spotter, the loader here also has a rifle. So what I'm going to use here is beige brown and just cover over the entire thing. Now I'm going to turn to Vallejo's black gray and I'm going to paint in, well, all of the black gray parts. <laughs> I'm using this rather than a pure black because it gives us a little that we can do with our shading. Uh, and as well, it doesn't look quite so harsh. So I'm going to use this to paint in his boots. Uh, I'm also going to paint in the, the hoses on the battery pack here. 
I kind of like the idea of these being like sheathed in rubber or something. And that won't take very long to do. And as well, any metal work on the rifles, I'll paint this in using this as well. Now, as well as that, uh, one thing I did quickly forget to mention is the index finger, the trigger finger on these guys specifically, tends to have an exposed finger. So I've used a little bit of tanned flesh there, the same as I have done on previous guys. Uh, I just realized that I had forgotten it, did it, and then forgot to show it on camera. So I swear, that's, that's the color you got to use there. Uh, but what we'll turn to now is Death Guard Green, and I'm going to paint in the capes with this. Now this will cover fairly well, but you may find on some of the bigger flatter areas that you want to come back and give it a second coat. It is important that this has a nice solid finish. Now that will take a couple of coats to get a nice solid color, but once you've done that, you can move on to painting in the gloves. Now here what I've got is Green Grey from Vallejo, uh, 886 specifically, because there are two Green Greys. I think they may have renamed one of them, but all the same, you're looking for the darker version of the two. Now comes the fun part. All of the painted metal, so stuff like the helmets and the weapon itself, we're going to paint with refractive green or retractive green. The color is not always named the same on every bottle that you might see in the store, unfortunately. It is Vallejo 890, if that helps. So I'm probably going to swap to a bigger brush to paint in the rest of the gun, but the helmets will be nice and quick with a splash of this. Now I did discover while I was painting the helmets that the helmet and face mask were actually one continuous piece. So instead I've painted over the face mask with the green there. Now, I think that's going to look a little bit better in the long run. Now the last thing that I'm going to apply, this is a color called Canvas. Now it's from the Vallejo Panzer Aces line. Anywhere that you can get Vallejo paints, you'll most likely be able to find this one. Uh, and if you can't, just ask to have it ordered in or find it online. Uh, I'm going to paint this in as the color for, funnily enough, the canvas pack that's carrying this walloping great uh, battery. There's just a couple of tiny details left to do where it honestly won't matter if you don't paint them. They're not going to stand out. You're not going to miss anything, but it will look cool if you do go that tiny bit extra. So what I have is some mahogany brown, and I'm going to very carefully paint in the straps on the sides of the helmets. Uh, any other leather details you might have that you want to touch up with a little bit of interesting reddish leather. Get in there now. And then any large prominent buckles I'm going to paint with Retributor Armor. Now this will look super bright right now, but once we've shaded it, it's going to look a much more sensible brassy sort of color. So I am going to touch in a couple of control dials, just break things up a little, make the miniature look a bit more interesting from a distance. And once you finish with that, you can cruise around and do any tidy up you need to. I quite often find that I end up splashing the uniform, so I have tidied that up in a couple of places. Now we're going to shade the miniature. You'll see I'm lurking here with quite a big, <laughs> quite a big brush. And what I have is my little mixed up pot. This is half and half, Lamy and medium, and Agrax Earthshade. Now you can use uh, Agrax Earthshade Neat. It's not. It's just going to give you a much darker finish. Uh, what I'm going to do is, as you'll see, just bury the entire miniature in this. So working quickly, making sure to work it into the recesses. And if you get any big pools, you can move it away with the brush while it is still wet. So I'm going to work quite quickly here. And we'll come back in about half an hour once this has dried. Now, once that's had plenty of time to dry, you'll have something that looks like this. And that's fine to base up. We can pop that on the table and get some games in. But of course, while we're painting it, let's go a little further. Now, in the Rifleman painting video, I suggested that it was easier to have both Nurgling Green Dry and Layer versions. But what I'm going to try this time, and uh, hopefully this experiment bears out, is just to use the Layer version. And I'm going to dry brush with it. So I've got one of my little flat dry brushes, and I've worked most of this Nurgling Green off into a bit of kitchen towel. And you'll see, brushing against those regions of detail, it'll work fine. We get some nice green highlights on the capes. 
Now in some areas, you are going to struggle to reach with the brush, so leave those as they are. And we'll come back in a second. With a slightly smaller brush, we can use the same paint, thin it out with just a tiny bit of water, as usual, and pick out some of those areas where we're going to struggle to reach with a dry brush, so we don't miss out on any of our highlights. Well, it might look a little bit different in style, but to be quite honest, it will look fine. Something I really like about the dry brushing first is that it gives those capes a bit of texture, which I think feels appropriate to the miniatures. What we're going to do now is exactly the same thing on the uh, ammo packs, and for this I'm going to use Talan Sand. This is a really great khaki colour, interestingly enough. What I'm going to do is work off most of it onto a bit of kitchen towel, and like I said, exactly the same thing again. We're going to dry brush to catch the edges of detail, in any areas like shoulder straps and what have you, where it might be a little difficult to reach, I'm going to swap to a smaller brush and paint those bits in traditionally. Then we'll turn to a little bit of Ushabti bone, and we'll highlight some of the edges of the webbing. Now, these guys it's not going to be particularly prominent. Uh, most of their webbing is kind of tucked up and hidden, so you can be a little quick and rough with this. Don't worry about highlighting the stuff that's on their chest, for example. You can go back to a little bit of the green-grey to tidy up the gloves. If you want to, you can mix in something slightly lighter. A little bit of deck tan or something similar will work here. Uh, but I find just a little bit to make the fingers look a bit fuzzier and softer. These are supposed to be woolen gloves after all. Now we're cooking with gas. What I've got here, this is a mix of English uniform with about a quarter, so three parts English uniform to one part of Morgast bone. And we're going to highlight the uniforms with this. Uh, this will look very bright going on, so uh, take your time with it. And uh, I'm not going to go over everything because these uniforms are quite detailed. I just want some of the extreme edges of the detail to pop out a little bit at table distance. Now the last highlight we're going to apply is a little bit of gunmetal. Now this version that I'm using, this is from the Model Air range from Vallejo, and you can be quite sparing with it. All I'm going to do is pick out the edges of a few details on the rifles. Now before we get to basing these guys, I am going to varnish them. Now you can use a spray varnish here, anything that you like, really. I'm using Varnish Plus from Instar. This stuff brushes on really nicely and gives a super matte finish. Now once that is dry, the first thing you want to do to base them is bake your twigs. Now, <laughs> if you go outside, you can take clippings off of a tree. This is uh, just off of one of the twigs that came in the garden. You know, go outside, grab a stick. Uh, this one... I believe these were off of rose bushes, but it's important once you've picked them up that they need to be dried out uh, because anything that's in there still wet, it will eventually rot. And you might even have some little passages in there. It can be pretty gross if you don't treat these first. So what I did was to pop these in the oven, uh, put them in the middle of the oven at 120 degrees Celsius, which is about 250 Fahrenheit off the top of my head. And uh, yeah, let them bake very gently for about 20 minutes. What you'll then end up with is nice dry twigs, which we can use as logs. Now this bit of the rose branch, uh, you'll see if you snap them, you get really rough. Oh gosh, well we won't use that one then. Anyhow, normally if you snap them, you'll get a nice ragged edge, which does look kind of like it's been blown to pieces. Uh, whereas you can use a pair of clippers and cut them and you'll get something that looks much more like it was chopped by somebody. So what I'm going to do is cut down my logs to fit this space here. Once you've got your twigs down to the size that you want, uh, spend a little bit of time just organizing them so that they look kind of cool and don't glue them down yet. Uh, you could glue them down and then try and get the basing material around them. It's going to be much easier to do it the other way around, though. So, I know how I want them to look. Let's chuck them aside for now. 
and on goes a layer of Stirland mud. So some of these areas you're going to find it a little bit difficult to get up underneath uh, without hitting the uniforms, but to be quite honest, it's only going to look more authentic. So splatter a bunch of this on, and of course, don't forget your spotter. And once that's had a good long while to dry, what I've got here is a little bit of packing foam, something out of a blister or similar, and I've just torn it to shreds. I'm going to use this as essentially a brush to add a little bit of dryad bark. So dip your paint in there, and then on a bit of paper or kitchen towel, dab it around a few times until you're leaving behind little random splotches. Then what we'll do, let's turn this fella around and start blobbing a little bit of it onto his uniform, onto the base of his gear. This is going to give us a muddy finish. And particularly, another fun thing, you can also dab it lightly on the edge of the helmets and the gun. You'll see what I'm going to do with that in a moment. Now, as well as getting a bit of grime on the uniforms themselves, what I've got here is a pencil, and I'm going to use this to lightly catch the edges of some of the metallic bits where we've splurged on that dryad bark. And you see we get a cool, dinged-up metallic effect with very little work. And that pencil trick is one of my favorite ways of highlighting metal very quickly. It's a little difficult to see on camera, but in person, that is wicked. What I've got now is some steel legion drab though, we're going to go back to the basing and we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did earlier, but just mulching a little bit higher up areas that are likely to get grubby. And the other thing we're going to do with steel legion drab is to quite roughly overbrush all of the grime and sand. Now most of this is going to be covered by tufts and snow and what have you, so don't feel as though it needs to be perfect by any stretch. What I've got here is some quick dry and PVA, and we're going to use this to attach these logs, big mighty logs, can't you see, to, <laughs> to the base. You do not need to be careful with this at all. PVA blessedly dries clear, uh, so I'm going to let that settle there. Now, short of letting that dry overnight, you're probably not going to get it perfectly clear right in the recesses, but honestly, that's close enough, especially considering we are going to bury this stuff in snow in a minute. But first, what we're going to do is drench it in varnish. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you use a mat or what have you here. Uh, mostly what we're looking to do is make these a little bit more sturdy. Now, once that's dry, it comes to the part that you can get a bit cheeky. Any bits that you're worried that you can't quite reach properly with the brush when you were painting, go ahead now, sneak in there with a tuft, and hide it. Don't tell anybody, and I won't. <laughs> now comes what is actually my favorite part. Grab yourself a rank old brush and some Valhallen Blizzard. Now this stuff, it is bar none my favorite snow effect on the market, because... It looks pretty goopy and white going on, but as it dries, the uh, the carrier, if you will, actually dries quite matte. So you don't get uh, the big chunky blobby whiteness that I've got here, for example. It's going to look much more frosty. What I'm going to do is pretty much cover the base in this, especially making sure to work it into some of the uh, tufts to look like it's collected there for a while. Right up under the wood as well, I might use a Slightly different brush for this. But now we're going to jam this in here. And yeah, basically go to town, making it look as though this has been properly snowed on fairly recently. And there at last, our Gloom Trench weapon team is complete. Now the poor fella attached to the end is kind of whizzing around out of focus quite quickly. So unfortunately, I'm just going to nab him off of there for now so that we can concentrate on the main event. Now the blood on the snow... Um, I've seen some cool stuff about sort of storytelling on your diorama bases, and I thought I wanted to sell the idea that this was a position that these guys had defended a few times before. Now I went ahead and added a little bit of blood for the Blood God, which is, it's a gloss, it's a little bit goopy, it's a great blood effect. But I put way too much on, and I thought, oh no, that looks tacky now. So what I did then was to throw more Valhalla and Blizzard over the top, 
and that just made it go foamy and pink, which looks brilliant. So <laughs> don't be afraid to mess around with what you're doing because you might stumble onto something that looks all the more realistic and fun. So thanks again to the team at Fickle Dice Games for sponsoring this video. This has been a real blast to do something unusual like this. As well, thank you to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, and all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan, Kyrie, Rod, Jimmy, Andrew, and Phil. Your support means the world, folks, and lets me keep buying resin. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.